what's up guys it's Mike we're back at it again and we're back at the mods that's it finally it's time to go back to the mods it is winter time it is cold we will be still off-roading all through the winter but we've got a little bit more time because it's dark at like four o'clock now and yeah I'd rather be sleeping like my cat over there and trust me you don't really want to do anything in this kind of weather you don't really want to move around or do much but at least we have a heated underground garage where we can work so I'm gonna take advantage and we're gonna go down and start doing some more mods starting with JKS quick disconnects and they just showed up today I already tore the package open so let's do a quick unboxing and let's go down there and slap them on the Jeep so if you guys have been following the channel then you know that I've been driving with no actual sway bar or no sway bar links connected to my sway bar so basically no sway bar for the past i'd say uh probably two seasons so since about march so all through the spring and the summer now that it is the end of fall or i should say also the fall so now that it is the end of fall and we're starting to get into colder weather i figured it's a little bit uh safer and just a bit more peace of mind to have the sway bar links when i'm driving it around in this kind of weather so i'm gonna throw them in and they're not that expensive it is an easy mod it is something that we can do probably in about an hour so let's go and let's slap these in but before we go let's see what we got now i'm not going to take everything out i'll take out one side for you guys now it comes with the bracket the bracket goes on the top if my finger was the sway bar the sway bar goes right here you kind of mount this in there and then you stick one of these sleeves inside of your spherical bushing here these ones are actually like ball bushings you can see on both ends Whoop! let's not drop anything so the ball bushing is supposedly supposed to help when you're throwing it on to your disconnect link or your disconnect pin and the disconnect pin is tapered as you can see so that ball depending on how you're angled if you're not perfectly level it's supposed to help you slide it on this being tapered and that being like a ball having that little bit of play gives you that extra little bit of give or extra little bit of wiggle room to get her in there so how this setup is basically put together is you've got these pins that mount to your frame so that when you're not using the links as actual sway bar links and you just want to disconnect them you can still pin them up onto your sway bar i mean onto your frame sorry it comes with one sleeve you would put the sleeve in the top the bottom you're going to have the pin and it comes with all the hardware to mount everything up it comes with the hardware to mount the pins onto your frame and it comes with the quick disconnect linch pins so these ones are just like a snapper pin basically it just snaps into place you can see how it kind of has a tension to it so that is going to be holding your sway bar link in while it's in use and it's pretty straightforward it is a quick install it is something that pretty much anybody can do on their own and if you don't have a sway bar link like me already then it's that much easier if you do you might need a ball joint puller or something to get your sway bar out me i would just use a hammer and just knock it out through the top through the sway bar but sometimes they get really jammed in there so depending on what your situation is you might need that but let's go i'm going to gather all the tools i need i'll show you guys exactly what tools you're going to need and let's go throw this on the jeep that's the life but we got to get back to work so I'll see you in a bit, big guy. So I know my unboxing wasn't the best, but this is everything that you need to complete one side. So basically, this is everything that comes in the kit, but you should have two of all of these items. So you have your sway bar link. You've got your insert for the bushing right here. This goes inside your sway bar link on the top. This is your bracket that connects the sway bar link to the actual sway bar. So that'll sit like so. Once this is inserted, that'll go around there. This is the pin that you will use when you're not actually using the sway bar. This is the one that when it's disconnected, this is going to hold it in place. That's the screw that goes with that. This is the actual screw that will hold this to the sway bar. This is the one that will hold this to the bracket or the link to the bracket, I should say. This will be your bushing on your pin right here and obviously your linch pin to keep it all shut or in place. Now as for tools, 
I will show you guys a quick and easy way to do this because I already did one side so it is a lot easier for me to actually let you guys know the, the easier way to do this and the easier way is get yourselves a drill that is actually an impact driver so if you have an impact driver get yourself some drill bits that fit on there kind of like so and what I did was I drilled myself a pilot hole then I drilled myself a bigger hole bigger hole bigger hole and I used this instead of a tap and die so instead of using a tap I used the drill bit that has a thread built into it and this is my first time using it and it actually worked really well now the reason I decided to use this today is because I tried to get a tap in the right size which is a 5 16 and I couldn't get it in time so I decided I'll get this since this was available to me and it actually works really well so I'll show you guys how it's done and how to use it but don't be scared P people tell you that uh, these do break and these aren't the best that's because they're probably not drilling their pilot holes I'm telling you I drilled a pilot hole I've already used this and it still looks brand new and honestly it came out great so I'll show you guys the technique and the best way to use these and don't be afraid that once you're going it's gonna go too fast through the threads once it hits the threaded portion it will slow down because it has that threaded portion just make sure that you spin it out the opposite way that you went in so you don't destroy the threads when you're taking the bit out but we'll get to that so what are you gonna need you're gonna need a 17 socket you're gonna need a 19 socket you're gonna need a screwdriver that fits inside of this pin on this pin. And the reason being is you're gonna want something that actually can stop it from spinning when you're tightening it down. So you're gonna need a thin screwdriver and you're gonna need a six mil Allen head. Now I'm using a bit with a bit driver on my socket because I don't have the right size Allen, Allen key or actually I have the Allen key but I don't have the right size bit here. So if you use one of these, it'll work as well. But I prefer using one of these just because it gives you a little bit more torque. Like I said, I don't have the right size with me here. So I have the right size bit. It is a six mil Allen head. Looks something like this. So if you guys do need to use this, it does work. And if you have the actual socket, even better. So 17, 21 Allen head, six mil, your drill driver. And instead of a tap, you will need a good set of drill bits and your tapping drill or tapping drill bit. This thing was about 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. It's definitely worth the money and I definitely recommend it. And after you guys see how it works, I think you guys will be pretty impressed yourselves. So let's get at it. It's pretty simple to put together. The first thing we're gonna do is throw this bracket onto the sway bar. So let's go and let's mount this up. And it does take the nut and bolt that are already connected together. So grab that and let's go. So simple, slip your bracket over your sway bar. If you're doing this on a TJ like I am, you don't need the washer. You just slip your bolt in underneath and your nylon lock nut from the top. Okay, now we have the bracket installed and you wanna tighten this nut to about 40 foot pounds. As you can see, it is straight with the actual sway bar. It isn't straight to the side of the Jeep. So make sure you just align it with your sway bar and just make sure it's square with the end and it doesn't look kind of off or funny. Something like that. Now the next step is to get this guy in there. And all you have to do is slip him inside the bottom over here where your sway bar would connect with the actual tapered side inwards. Start your nut on there and throw your screwdriver inside and tighten it up. And this nut you wanna do to 65 foot pounds. Now, once everything is in, you can test fit and check the length of your sway bar link. Just for ease of use, Get yourself the bolt, slip it in there, and then thread it in just one or two threads just so you can actually set the length properly.
Now, what I should mention is to set your length properly, get your sway bar at a 10 degree angle from the pivot point. So wherever your pivot point is, this should be at a 10 degree angle from that. It shouldn't be straight according to the instructions from JKS. So I'm gonna install it how they say, and we'll go from there and see if we have any issues. But this is basically the angle that I, get, I got it at, and that's pretty much what the diagram looks like. If you guys see here, So it's as close as I could get it to their diagram without it looking ridiculous. As you can see, it is on a bit of an angle here, but that's basically how they ask to do it. So set your screw in or your bolt, then come down here and spin until you get it to the right length, making sure to always leave your Zerk fitting or your grease fitting at the front. So basically keep spinning once you get it to the right length, you can see it's a little bit short still. There, it should slide right on. And while you're doing this, you might as well throw on your little spacer or bushing this little rubber looking guy, throw that on the pin. And that's basically how it's gonna sit, just like so. And you can see, you still have room to slide in your little locking pin right there. So now that the length is set properly, take it off. Take out your screw and without actually sh turning the shaft, turn this lock nut all the way down and lock it in place, which I'm about to do now, but I'm going to need two hands to take this out properly. So I'm going to set you guys down for a sec. All right, I lied. There is one more tool you will need. It is either a 15 16th open end or an adjustable. I'm using an adjustable today. Once you have your link set to the proper length, get your lock nut or jam nut and lock it in place. Now this one doesn't have to be crazy tight. You're basically just locking it in from spinning. Once it's actually mounted, it's mounted at two points. It's not going to spin anyway. That's just like a extra basically catch so that once you release it, it doesn't spin on you and you don't have to set the length every single time. So that's basically what that's for. Now use the supplied thread locker they give you or use your own if you have your own and you prefer that. You don't have to do the whole bolt because you're not gonna be threading in the whole bolt. You're gonna be threading in pretty much that much. So get your thread locker on there, grab your link and time to go install it. And this one you wanna to do to 40 foot pounds and now assuming we did everything correctly, it should slide right on. Now, once it's on, we should be able to get our pin in there. Just like so. And when you are installing the pin, make sure that the little head of the pin that sticks out is on the outside of where you were actually locking it to. Just like that. So now what you want to do is take your link, find a spot somewhere on the frame here where it's not really going to be in the way of the sway bar or anything once it's actually not in use, and mark your spot with a punch or a screwdriver, then start drilling your holes. So I'm gonna put you guys down again and I'm gonna mark my spot and we'll start. So that was a 1 8th. Now we're gonna step it up to a 3 16th. Now we move up to a quarter. And 
and finally, our drill bit with the threads cut into it. Now don't get me wrong, if you guys have a tap set, then definitely use the taps, that's what I would use. Like I said, I wasn't able to get my hands on one before I could actually make this video, so I have to use this. But I'll tell you, I'm actually really impressed, and you guys will see why in a second. So you see I ran it through twice and now our hole is cut with our threads. I know it's a little hard to see on camera, but let's see just how well I cut those threads. Goes in like butter. So, like I said, it works pretty damn well. It works really quick. And you can see there's a threaded hole in the same amount of time it takes to drill a hole. That's pretty much it. This one doesn't have a torque spec because it doesn't actually use any load or doesn't hold any load. It's just there so that it can hold your link in place when it's not in use. So it is the next day guys and earlier today I actually went for a drive, took the Jeep out and I made a video of exactly what the sway bar links do, what a sway bar does because a lot of people have been asking me on my Snapchat or sorry on my Instagram story after I posted it of doing the links, what they are, what does the sway bar do and what is all that for. So I have a video coming out on exactly what the sway bar does, what the links do, what the quick release is and why you want it and before and after or with the links connected and with the links disconnected driving videos. So if you want to see that, that is going to be coming out, but I don't want to make this one too long. So for today, we did install everything. We got everything greased. It drives great. It actually drives as expected really well. And now I'm going to show you guys quickly with the links connected and with the links disconnected, just shaking the vehicle, how much body roll it has, just to give you an idea. So they are super greasy, so I'm gonna be using a glove, but I'll show you guys in real time right now how long it takes to disconnect them and connect them. And this glove is garbage, so I'm gonna grab another one. And I will be using my left hand. I'm not left-handed, it's just easier to get in there, but I'll show you guys how long it takes in real time. So let's go. And that's pretty much it. So now I'll give it another shake test and show you guys what it does with no links connected. So 
So as you guys can see, it makes a pretty big difference and it honestly is a world of a difference when you're driving it. And if you guys want to see exactly what it's like on road, like I said, I made a video. Uh, I put a camera in the, in the vehicle and I had a camera outside so you guys can see both in vehicle and outside what the vehicle is doing. So definitely if you want to know more or if you're interested to see how this actually works on and off road, then definitely check out that video. It will be coming out in a few days. But I think that's about it for now. There's one last thing that I think we need to do though. the joys of having a small trunk and I use all of my space <laughs> and of course the last step is to throw on the obligatory sticker not too much room to pick from but I guess we'll start overlapping them now and they actually included like a real vinyl sticker with transfer paper and everything that's pretty sweet I did not expect a nice quality sticker like that most of them are just like cheap stickers so guys that's pretty much about it I'm gonna pretty much wrap it up here for today <clears throat> excuse me uh, yeah if you guys want to see more or want to see exactly how these work then definitely check out my next video but if you guys did enjoy this video, jump down there, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot more than you think. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know what other mods you guys want to see or what quick disconnects you guys are running and if they're easier or harder to use because maybe I'll switch. Who knows? Uh, for now, I think I'm going to try these out and let you guys know what I, what I think and a long-term review. But I think they're going to be pretty good. So far, so good. They aren't too hard to take on and off and I think they should do pretty good once we're actually out on the road. So, once again, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So, until then, guys, ride safe out there. Peace.